Welcome to the University of Washington's Liver Transplant Educational Series. We are pleased to offer this educational seminar to our transplant patients and caregivers so that you will be more informed regarding liver disease, the transplant evaluation process, what to expect before and after transplant surgery, as well as medications you will need after transplant to maintain your new liver function. In this transplant educational segment, we will focus on our liver transplant program and liver disease. As a patient, you should feel confident that you have chosen an excellent transplant program for your transplant needs. The University of Washington Medical Center has been performing liver transplants since 1990. Our top-rated surgeons have performed more than 2,500 liver transplants to date, and our patients spend less time on the liver transplant wait list than the national average. You will find our survival rates are among the highest in the United States. Data proves how well our transplant program performs. The Scientific Registry of Transplant Recipients, better known as SRTR, obtains statistics from transplant organizations to see how patients do after liver transplant. This information is available to let people know how a transplant program is doing. This is known as transplant outcomes. The better the outcome, the better the transplant center. SRTR will report transplant outcomes on their website, and our medical center will provide updated reporting to all patients on our transplant list. We encourage you to review this data as it will offer you confidence in your decision to use the University of Washington Medical Center for your transplant needs. The University of Washington is a large network of multiple medical facilities and neighborhood clinics. Most patients are referred to our program by their local primary gastroenterologist. Patients are then scheduled for transplant assessment at the University of Washington's Montlake campus. Some patients may be referred to us from one of our sister hospitals, such as Harborview Medical Center's liver program, UW Eastside Hepatology Clinic, Northwest Hospital's Hepatology Clinic, or from our UW Satellite Clinic in Spokane, Washington. Regardless of where your referral started, your transplant evaluation will take place at the University of Washington's Montlake campus. For patients who live far away from Seattle, our team will make every effort to consolidate appointments so that your evaluation is completed in a timely manner. So what is liver transplant surgery? Liver transplant surgery is a surgical procedure where your diseased liver is removed and replaced with a healthy liver from a donor. The University of Washington performs cadaveric liver transplantation and living donor liver transplantation. The images you see here show these types of transplant surgery. During cadaveric transplant surgery, the diseased liver is removed and a healthy donor liver from a deceased donor is transplanted in its place. Similarly, during liver donor liver transplant, the diseased liver is removed and a portion of a liver taken from a living donor is transplanted in its place. As you move through this educational series, you will learn more about these types of transplant surgery that we perform at our facility. As you move forward in your transplant evaluation, you will begin to meet your transplant clinical care team. Each team member plays a distinct role in your transplant evaluation. As you can see in this slide, there are multiple disciplines who help in the assessment as well as treating the transplant patient. Your transplant hepatologist is a physician who is board certified in liver disease. During your transplant clinic visit, this physician will determine if you would benefit from liver transplant. 
Our transplant surgery team will meet with you to discuss what to expect during transplant surgery, including risks, complications, as well as the recovery process. You will have an opportunity to ask questions at this clinic visit, and we encourage you to bring a caregiver with you. You will be assigned a dedicated transplant nurse coordinator who will be your advocate during the transplant process. This nurse will also provide education and help to oversee your transplant evaluation. A social worker will meet with you to evaluate any existing psychosocial issues, including care support, chemical dependency, as well as your ability to cope with the stress of having a transplant. We also have a transplant psychiatrist available to meet with patients should this consulting service be requested by our team. Our transplant dietitian will assess your current diet and provide nutritional education as well as offer recommendations for additional nutritional support, such as tube feeding if needed. Our program also has a dedicated financial counselor who is available to talk with you about costs associated with transplant as well as insurance coverage. Finally, our transplant pharmacists work closely with our transplant surgeons and hepatologists to make sure all medications prescribed are safe for you. Your transplant clinical care team works together to offer you the best possible care as you are evaluated for liver transplant. Here, we will present information regarding liver disease and causes of liver failure. We will also discuss the signs and symptoms that many patients experience, as well as what to do in case of an emergency. Please remember that the information we cover here is just a general overview of liver disease. Please reach out to your transplant nurse coordinator at the conclusion of this educational series to answer any questions you may have. The liver is the largest organ in our body. It is situated in the right upper quadrant of the abdominal cavity right underneath your diaphragm. The liver is triangular and has two lobes, a right lobe and a smaller left lobe. There are blood vessels which bring blood in and out of the liver, as well as bile ducts which transport bile from the liver to aid in digestion. The liver has over 500 functions, way too many to review in detail, but we will go over some of the main functions. The liver is a large filter which cleans our blood of toxins and other compounds. It is responsible for the production of bile, which helps the small intestine break down fats to make them easier to digest. The liver is responsible for the metabolism of bilirubin, which is the pigment formed in your liver when it breaks down red blood cells. The liver is also responsible for storing many vitamins and helps to break down carbohydrates into sugars so that your body has energy to function. Some other liver functions include the production of albumin, which helps to prevent leaking blood vessels, and your liver even plays a role in helping your blood to clot. As you can see, your liver is a necessary organ to help in daily functions that your body needs to survive. This unique organ is the only organ in our body that can fully regenerate itself, if it's healthy. This means it can grow, which is why living donor liver transplant can be an option. As we have seen in the previous slide, your liver is essential to life. So what happens when your liver becomes sick? Liver disease occurs when your body is exposed to an injury which causes your liver cells to die. When these cells die off, scar tissue is replaced. With less liver cells, your liver can no longer function at full capacity. What injuries cause liver disease? In this slide, we will review the most common causes of liver failure. Chronic liver disease. Most patients have chronic liver failure and advanced cirrhosis. 
This type of liver disease has happened over a long period of time and leads to scarring of the liver and loss of liver function. The most common causes of chronic liver failure include hepatitis B and hepatitis C, alcohol abuse, fatty liver disease, autoimmune disorders, primary biliary cirrhosis, and primary sclerosing cholangitis, as well as other causes. Liver cancer. Some patients have a tumor in their liver. Liver cancer, also known as hepatocellular carcinoma, is an indication for liver transplant, as transplant is considered the cure. We also evaluate patients for cholangiocarcinoma, a cancer of the bile ducts within the liver. Both cancers must meet certain qualifying criteria for transplant to be considered. Acute liver failure. Acute liver failure happens suddenly. It happens in patients who don't have pre-existing liver disease. Sometimes patients may be prescribed a medication and have an adverse reaction, or people overdose on drugs such as Tylenol, or they consume a toxic substance which may lead to their liver failing overnight. Patients in acute liver failure will be hospitalized and in our intensive care unit. Patients in acute liver failure will require transplant within a short period of time, as this form of liver disease can quickly lead to death. When a person's liver becomes sick, cells in the liver begin to die off and get replaced with scar tissue. Since the liver has less healthy cells functioning, the body begins to show signs of advanced liver failure. This slide is an example of the signs and symptoms most liver patients experience. We will spend some time talking about the common ones. Some patients may develop jaundice. Jaundice is the yellowish color to your skin or sclera, which is the white part of your eye. This is due to a high level of bilirubin that is in your blood. If you or your caretaker notice a change in the color of your skin or eyes, you should follow up with your local physician. Many of our patients have fluid in their abdomen. This condition is called ascites and is when fluid builds up in spaces within the abdomen. This can lead to swelling of the abdomen, which can lead to a decrease in appetite and weight loss. Some patients may even develop fluid in their lung cavity, known as hepatic hydrothorax. To help with these conditions, patients will be prescribed diuretics, also known as water pills. Typical medications prescribed are aldactone, spiranolactone, furosemide, and Lasix. Some patients may undergo a procedure called a paracentesis, or thoracentesis. This is when a sterile needle is inserted in a fluid pocket in your abdomen or lung cavity to remove the fluid. We advise patients not to have a permanent drain placed to help relieve this fluid as this can lead to infection and death. Hepatic encephalopathy. Patients may also develop brain fog known as hepatic encephalopathy. As we have learned, our liver is a big filter and its job is to remove toxins from our body. Ammonia is a toxin that your liver cannot remove efficiently due to fewer liver cells working. With a higher level of ammonia in the blood, patients can develop foggy thoughts, change of mood, increased fatigue, and even a change in personality. Medications prescribed for this condition include lactulose or a pill known as rifaximin or zyfaxin. Caregivers need to monitor that all medications are taken as prescribed. A few missed dosages can lead to a rapid decline in a patient's mental status. 
Esophageal Varices During your transplant evaluation, you will be asked to undergo an upper endoscopy, known as an EGD. This screens for esophageal varices. Esophageal varices are vessels in your throat that can become enlarged due to increased pressure from a poorly functioning liver. This can lead to blood vessels that suddenly bleed. Patients may start coughing up bright red blood or coffee ground colored vomit. This can be frightening and patients will need to seek emergency care. Some patients who develop this condition will be placed on a medication to help lower their blood pressure. Common medications prescribed are natalol or propranolol. There are many other symptoms of liver disease that some patients may experience, such as itchy skin, darkened color of urine, pale colored stool, or bloody tar colored stool, chronic fatigue, loss of appetite, nausea or vomiting, and a tendency to bruise more easily. We encourage you to reach out to your transplant nurse coordinator if you would like to review the symptoms you are experiencing. What should you or your caregivers do if an emergency occurs? Patients with chronic health conditions live with a lower quality of health than many others. Being able to recognize when you need to access emergency services is extremely important. For caregivers, this can be challenging if the patient is refusing to go to a local emergency room or urgent care. This slide offers you information on when to seek emergent care. Patients need to go to the emergency room if they have difficulty in breathing or are actively bleeding, such as coughing up red blood or bloody stools. We encourage using 911 for all emergencies as this will shorten the treatment time when you arrive at the local hospital. Patients with hepatic encephalopathy can become disoriented, combative, sleep excessively, or show signs of general confusion. Hepatic encephalopathy can quickly deteriorate to a condition where the patient can become unconscious, which can even lead to death. Caregivers need to make sure that the medications prescribed for this condition are taken as directed. Missing one or two doses can lead to a rapid decline in a patient's mental status. Once you get to the local hospital, be sure to let the admitting physician know the name of the primary care doctor as well as the local gastroenterologist. It's also a good idea to let the doctor know that the patient is under evaluation for a liver transplant. Upon discharge, make sure follow-up appointments are scheduled with your local primary doctor or local gastroenterologist. We also ask that you touch base with your transplant nurse coordinator as our transplant center would like to know about any changes to your medical condition. As you move forward with liver transplant, many of your local doctors will begin to defer to the transplant center for advice. Some of your local physicians may even assume we have become your primary care team. Please remember that the liver transplant doctors are following you for liver transplant services only. This means that routine issues that you may be experiencing, such as ascites, hepatic encephalopathy, abdominal pain, fatigue, and other concerns should be addressed by your local providers. The liver transplant team is available for anything regarding your transplant evaluation, medical testing, as well as questions related to transplant listing. Thank you for watching this segment on our transplant program in liver disease. Should you need additional information, please reach out to your transplant nurse coordinator. You can now move on to part two of this educational seminar.